Hey, how are you? I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and today we're doing another map mastery guide, this time on King's Row, I know, right? King's Row, the map that we've talked about quite a bit, the map that I'm sure you've seen guides on before, videos on before, but really there hasn't been anything too recent. Most of the resources available for King's Row, despite being such a popular map, are kind of old and outdated, and there's been a lot of new strategies and modern sort of styles to play this map that I think are pretty relevant and I think, uh, hey, it could help us out. As always, we're starting with the attackers and again, as always, we're starting with the most basic, obvious thing, which exit to exit from. Well, I'll tell you, this middle one is actually not that bad. In a lot of maps, the middle entrance is really terrible and, and awful in every way, but the middle entrance on King's Row, not the worst. You can see that there aren't really any very long sight lines. This bus is blocking most of it. Although, still, as you come out here, people can potentially be peeking you from this angle. So, again, not the worst entrance. It is the fastest uh, of all the exits, but still there are safer ones. I recommend this right side exit for when you are doing a theater play, because it's really good for that. You are pretty much completely invisible the entire time, and now suddenly, bam, you're down here, no problem. And you're mostly safe. The opponent doesn't have too much of an opportunity to see you, just this one little turn right here. The left side entrance is for when you're pushing hotel or just any ground push in general. You come around the left side here and notice we're entirely safe the entire time. No one can possibly see us. People don't stand here. And now we round the corner and boom, we're right in their face. We have immediate access to hotel if we want to. That's this building right here. Or we can just push like normal, we can do a split, we can do whatever we want, very, very safe, and we were behind cover and invisible the entire time. So the middle exit, not quite as tragic as most other maps, but still, I think, suboptimal compared to the side left and right exits. Now, there's also this funky one up here. This is the sniper perch, just in case. This is a pretty common strategy, most people know this, but a lot of times people can pick Widowmaker or Hanzo and just sort of peek this for maybe 5 to 10 seconds, try to get a pick, scout out the enemy team composition, and then come back and swap and take the middle entrance to rejoin their team. So for the longest time, we saw even professional teams pretty often just go for the straight push like that. But this has since fallen severely out of favor. This is It's very rare that you'll just see that anymore. And there's a good reason for it too is if there's any control on this high ground, there's no way you can ever get it unless you have an extremely mobile team. Plus you have this area to worry about, you know, a Roadhog or something peeking from hotel. That's very, very common. There are players who can peek potentially from this doorway. A little bit less common, but it happens. There are players that can sneak up from stairs. There are some people who play like this, this area up here as well. And they just sort of peek and check like this. And so basically, we have we saw the same sort of thing happen on Hanamura as well, where if you come in and this is where you're pushing, well, you have hotel to worry about up here, up here, up here, this angle, of course, just the front, potentially back stairs. And so um, that's a lot of arrows. That's, that's really bad news. The only time anymore you really see a team doing this is if the defenders are pushed way, 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 way back. If the attackers scout out and they see, oh, the defenders are way back here, defending way back here, then there's no reason to take any of this. You can just straight push them in. And you can usually split a little bit with hotel as well. More commonly, you will see two different types of pushes. So the most simple one is through hotel. And by doing this, so we already explained, you go on the right, the left entrance, come through here, Ta-da, we're in hotel. And this is probably one of the simplest pushes out of any map in the game. You just go in here, and first of all, you're picking off any flankers, like that cheeky Roadhog who likes to sit back here. No, he's dead. Sometimes you'll see an Anna or something sitting way, way, way back here healing. A Mercy back there, dead. And now you've put yourself in a really good position. As long as you don't, if you don't get stuck in hotel, that's pretty nasty. But if you just push in here, and the defenders are defending on the point. That's pretty standard for solo queue, right? Now, well, you are attacking them from both sides. And overall, despite its simplicity, it's just a solid, good strat. The only, uh, the only thing that will be a problem is if the entire enemy team is all really crammed back here. 
just really, you know, back here because then you can't really take advantage of this. But like I said before, if the entire if the entire enemy team is really turtling hard back in this area, then you don't even need, you don't even need to worry about this. You just push straight through and walk onto the point. In solo queue, even if your team doesn't all push hotel together, even if they're pushing normal through main, taking access for yourself if you can win, if you can win the fight over here is a huge huge benefit for your team. The second push you often see is the high ground push and that's when either usually the entire team comes up here or, or some of the team comes up here to clear this out. You have a soldier, some other ranged hero, a Hanzo potentially, that's actually a hero that sees play on King's Row. With the help of a Lucio you can get over here or just a soldier sprint or a Hanzo climb. And this allows you to clear out anyone who's over here because you have access to the high ground, any nasty Widowmakers, you can take care of that pretty easily. Plus you can just do terrible, terrible amounts of damage onto the defenders on the point themselves. As any hero, Soldier, Hanzo, from back here, it's tremendous. Popping a visor back here, oh man, easy team wipe. Now the amount of variations you can actually go into from the high ground are kind of ridiculous. You can have the entire team go this way and do a push, you can have, you know, you can have a split, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff, you can go through this building. So I'm not going to go through all that, but I think the most basic way to execute this in a solo queue environment is because your team is normally pushing through main like this somehow. But uh, pretty, I mean, the easiest way to execute it is to have your team push through like this and then have a couple of DPS players or support players up here on the high ground supporting them. This is very effective because it gives you a lot of flexibility to stop any of the defenders who are defending on the high ground. Plus. You can easily support your team. So even if your team doesn't want to listen, if they if they like to go this way, then support them from the high ground. If they like to go this way, then support them from hotel. Now for the defense. Defending the first part of this map is incredibly difficult, even against relatively uncoordinated teams, because I just showed you how easy it is to make real good pro quality pushes essentially on King's Row. They're very, very simple, the basic strats at least. They get much more complicated, but on a basic, basic level, they're quite easy to pull off and intuitive as well. The issue on defense is you have to have a strong ground force, a strong peeling force to be able to hold this down, but at the same time you need to be able to prevent them, the attackers, from taking this high ground. And so a lot of times pro level teams will opt to run these super mobile compositions and do really particular positioning to hop up and then hop down and then counter and it's all about rotations and that's not going to happen in a regular solo queue game. So the best thing to do is to identify your team's weakness. If your team has a lot of really good defensive strong heroes that can hold the fort down on the ground, hold this down pretty well, then I suggest either picking a mobile hero that can take advantage of climbing up the high ground or playing any hero and just camping the high ground in general. Making sure no one gets up here holding this down. Because if your team is good down here, the worst thing that, they, that could happen to them is any sort of high ground shenanigans. On the contrary, if you have a lot of mobile heroes, like if your team is D.Va, Genji, Tracer, things like that, with a lot of mobility, the high ground may be not as big of a deal. Or if you have a soldier, for example, who's already standing up here, maybe not as big of a deal come down and hold on the ground more. Make sure that they don't get hotel quite as easily. In the end, it comes down to these two areas as the most basic, important places on the map. If you can hold one of these areas down while your team holds the other area down, you're putting yourself at a tremendous advantage in this first point in King's Row. Also, as a defense, don't trade at all because, of course, look how short this spawn is. It's ridiculous how short this is. And then on, uh, on defense, you have an incredibly long spawn. So trading yourself for one other kill, like trading one for one, is always really bad. You should always be trying to stay alive or at least go two for one or better. Next we have Streets Phase, another section that's pretty easy for the attackers compared to the defenders. And now this is all about flanking and not making sure you get flanked, especially on attack. So. You can see on defense, there are very few areas that are actually good. If you hold here, you can be flanked around this way. That's not very good. If you hold a little bit further back, you can be flanked around this way. 
ouch, plus this passage actually continues to go, so you can be flanked from this door. And in fact, it goes all the way around as well. So does this. This passageway goes all the way around. And so the attackers have tons of flank routes to get behind you no matter where you are. And as an attacker, you have to utilize this. If you don't have an ultimate advantage, if you can't quite punch through a defense, then utilize these flanking paths. There's no way that a defending team should be able to survive a push from this way and this way and potentially around this way. At the same time, it's also, uh, I'm sure you've had this happen before, the defenders can flank around just as easily. A Genji, a soldier can get back here, a Widowmaker can get back here on defense and really mess you up as you're trying to push out on attack. I'm sure this has happened to you before. You have to be able to counter this. If you are a, if you're an offense hero, you need to be watching out for this, counter pushing this, counter flanking, making sure no one comes over here. And if you're a support hero, you have to be very very careful to look behind you. You need to be very paranoid. If you're pushing up this way as a support hero, then you should always be checking behind. Okay, no one's back there. No one's back there. Keep communicating with your team. No one's flanking us. And if someone is flanking you, then you need to say, you need to say this is the most important phase of the map to have communication. Once again, this section of the map is very simple in concept, although in the middle of a match it can be very very confusing, especially the streets phase. Just on defense, make sure you know the major flanking routes. So if you're here, you know that it's from this direction and this direction. That's where you need to be looking. If you're here, you know the major flanking route is from this direction. That's where you need to be looking. If you're back here, you know that the worst flanking route is from here and potentially around the back. And so on and so on. So the best way to give your team an edge of streets phase is to look at where your team is looking. If you're here and your entire team is looking very aggressively in this direction and they're not turning their head, oh well, this is kind of bad. We need to look at this, right? Now you should position yourself up here. If you do this, you're greatly increasing your team's chances of victory because, well, they can't be flanked anymore. So Streets Phase of King's Row is all about awareness, map positioning, rotation, and communication. This is what this section of King's Row is more important than any other section of any other map to call things out because it's all about trying to sneak behind people. So now this is it, we're on to the final segment. And so here's where things get a bit spicier. So it's not quite as simple as, okay, go and kill him. I mean, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. King's Row has a lot of very simple, sort of clean sight lines. That's why it's so popular. That's why it gained so much popularity early on, because it was simple enough that you could have high quality games on King's Row, even in beta, when teams weren't that experienced. So as an attacker, there's a very specific path you have to take to actually approach this. Now, you can guess and you can automatically lose the fight every once in a while, but basically as you approach, one person, and that's probably gonna be you, one person has to come up this side and check this. Obviously, if you're like a Reinhardt, you can't do it, but at least, at the very least, if you're pushing up, if you're pushing up like this, just glance, be like, okay, okay. One random reaper, one random tracer, something back here can really screw you up. The defenders should not be able to hold you here because if they do that, then don't push them this way. If the defenders are holding you very far up, then go around here. Because if you do this, now if you're Genji or something, you can climb up here and that's very easy, you're behind them. Or even if you're not, even if you're not a Genji, you can just come up here, very little time exposed and now you have high ground. If you're a soldier, anything. If you're a McCree, you can stand up here. And the defenders can't, like, they can't fight this. <laughs> they can't fight people coming from here and shooting down and coming from here all at the same time. Generally, you'll see that the defenders hold somewhere before this window. Because if they hold after the window like that, well, then you can just jump through the window and that's it. Sometimes there are players up here who are watching the window, so that kind of negates your ability to use that. But if there are players up here, that means that they have less influence here on the ground, which means that you have room to come on the right side instead. If you're, like I said again, a Genji, a Reaper, something like that, 
you're much, much more free to come on the right side because if they have, remember, if they have players up here, there's no way they have enough to take all of this as well. But generally, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well, generally where this map stabilizes is sort of in this area. The defenders will be holding back here or maybe a little bit more aggressively. Eh, it varies, you know, somewhere around this corner, right? Somewhere in here. And that's where you have to push them. There are basically two ways to do this. There's technically a third, but uh, it doesn't really work and I doesn't seem very popular. So the first is to get a hero like a Genji is really popular, potentially a Reaper if you're into that, a uh, Pharah as well. Any hero with vertical mobility can get up here and put pressure behind. This is very, very strong. This deals with any defensive position all the way back here, even all this area is very strong. So that's if you're running a mobile team composition, more like a divey team composition tends to like going up here. More of a dps -y composition will like to push up, like let's say there's a Reinhardt shield, we're pushing up like this. So we strafe over and then the DPS, Tracer specifically is a really big one because she has no vertical mobility up there, but she does have great mobility to get in here. And there's also McCree, Soldier up there as well, can easily come up here and this is huge. If you can get a Soldier up here, a McCree up here, this is a very very good position for them. Very difficult to kill them because of all the cover, plus they have a ton of maneuverability to get to whichever target they want. And then of course you push through here and you end the game. Now it's a, it's a bit awkward this last part compared to most maps. There aren't really too many amazing formations you can take. Now if you were that mobile hero who was up here, this is not a bad place. This, you know, if you're a Pharah Genji, this is not a bad place to camp for the, you know, the final preventing the defenders from respawning. As a DPS, you could still remain up here, although it's not quite good enough. It has the advantage of being able to come over here and see this spawn as well. Another good place, especially if you're support, is to be back here. This is very difficult for the enemy to see. I mean, they're not going to be paying attention to you, especially if you're an Ana who's not scoped in, if you're a Zenyatta. If you're a Mercy, they'll be able to see the beam, right? If you're a Lucio, they won't. So that's kind of the safe places, uh, the safe place for support. But besides that, I think I need to make an entire dedicated video to finishing off points because uh, it is something that I know a lot of players have issue with. Though on defense, I explained before how it can be a little bit rough to uh, do all this, but the downside for the attackers on King's Row is that they have a very, very long way to run. If they're here, for example, they have no cover all the way. Boop, 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 run, 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 run. Like, see, this is where they, this is the first time they actually get any cover. So King's Row is a map that is very easy to punish any sort of picks on. That's why you see very often, specifically on King's Row, if the if the defenders get any picks whatsoever, they push super hard and they'll push the attackers all the way back to their spawn because of how this map works. It's, it's very difficult to run away. So on defense, on King's Row specifically, if you get a pick, if you get any sort of advantage of the attackers, don't be afraid to push them more, uh, more aggressively than you would on other maps because other maps don't have this long corridor of death that the defenders, that the attackers can't uh, run away from. But once again, we see the King's Row pattern where you look at what the enemy team has and you counter it. You look at what your team has, you complement it. So you look at the other team. If they have lots of mobile heroes like Genji and Pharah or potentially Widowmaker, Reaper, the vertical mobility, you know that they're going for here, guaranteed, 100%. This is where they're going. So you need to counter it. Or at the very, very least, if there's no way for you to stop it, position yourself in such a way that they can't possibly hurt you from that angle. And also warn your team, be like, guys, Guys, they're up here. On the other hand, if the other team has a lot of backline-y DPS heroes, you know, ground types like Soldier, McCree, Tracer, they're going to want to come this way. So it's great to sit up here and prevent them. And this is, this is supports are good at doing this. DPS heroes, of course, are obviously good at the, doing this. If you're a Roadhog sitting up here, completely shutting down this angle, that's amazing as well. Because it's difficult for the attackers to just straight push. Generally, unless they're far better than your team, 
they will have to use either this if they're mobile or this if they're not. I explained before the third option of this, but this is incredibly risky for the attackers. This has a very high, a uh, very high failure rate, because you can see how dangerous this is. As you come in, it's not that great of a flank, first of all, because you're kind of just walking into them, not necessarily behind them, and there's also nowhere to run. If they, if you get caught out, you're just pretty much dead because there's no cover for all the way until here. King's Row is completely and totally about identifying where your team is and where the weakness is, what the other team has, and what weakness they're trying to exploit. Because all, all of these sections are very dual. They all have very dual natures to them. Like in the streets phase, you have two flanks in almost every part. In the first part of, of the map, you have either the high ground or low ground. Like we talked about before here, we have either the, uh, the hotel or the high ground, dual nature. And then we just, of course, went over the high ground and the side low ground of the last point as well. So as long as you're sticking to that mindset where you're thinking, okay, we have two weaknesses, which one do I need to cover on King's Row? You should be fine. And on attacker, of course, the exact opposite. You look at the defender's weakness, what are they not covering, and exploit that. Or what does what weakness is my team leaning towards more that I can help punch through uh, in the end. So anyway, guys, that is just about it for King's Row. So a lot of the tech and tricks for this map are kind of well known because it's so popular, but here's one I think is maybe a little bit more obscure. So a lot of times if you're defending, your team will be defending in this area, trying to defend this main gate. That's pretty cool. And you can get to a pretty nice place as soldier. So, well, you want to get up there? You just need to climb up here, very easily accessible. You just come and you kind of look in that direction. And you sprint and look, here we are. Pretty cool. You can easily scout anyone doing any weird things on the high ground. You have lots of pressure here. You can just drop down with your team and you're immediately safe. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you, you see that spot used in pro matches. Not necessarily a lot, but a decent amount. And so uh, I, I don't really see it at all in solo queue. So just wanted to share that. Leave your secret texts and tricks below so that other people can learn and any special strategies you might have to conquer the, uh, I guess it's already a classic, should we call it, King's Row here on Overwatch. Anyway guys, never forget to stay positive and have a great day. See you soon.